And so the last talk of today is given by Eric Kauf. And so new approaches to complexity using uh, quantum graphs. So please. Thanks for staying uh, for the last talk before the excursion. So I'm presenting some uh, joint work with Arthur Mehta, who's at the University of Ottawa. And uh, we were studying, we're studying a, a complexity problem that, uh, that's related to quantum graphs and it gives an interesting collection of uh, complete problems for some, some, uh, some well-known uh, proof classes. So I'll give an overview of the complexity classes involved uh, in, in this work. So the most basic one is when you just have a classical computer presented as a Turing machine is what can you do in polynomial time on this as uh, the class P and then there's the proof version of that. When you, oh, sorry. There's, all, there's the random version of that, which is um, BPP, a uh, bounded error pro, a probabilistic polynomial time, and then the quantum version, BQP, um, which is when you, or what, what can you do when you have a, a quantum, um, quantum computer running in polynomial time. Um, these, these can be augmented with um, classical um, proofs. So there's, a, there's a, a, um, a prover who gives a classic, an extra classical piece of information that for a yes instance should always, um, should, should, should help the, the verifier um, to, learn, um, to learn that it is a yes instance and in a no instance, no proof should, should fool the verifier into thinking um, that it is in fact a yes instance with high probability and that this gives the classes NP uh, classically, MA uh, for randomized classical and, and QCMA for um, um, quantum with classical proofs. Um, in, the, in the quantum case, there's a few uh, larger, potentially larger classes um, that are, that are um, alternate versions of, uh, of, of a proof class, uh, QMA, which is where the proof is a quantum state and not a classical string. And then the, the main focus of this work is uh, on QMAK, where instead of um, assuming that there's one quantum proof, um, the prover gets uh, multiple quantum proofs, or also, uh, sorry, the verifier gets multiple quantum proofs, uh, or alternately, um, the, 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 the proof state has partitions across which there's, it, there's a guarantee of having no entanglement. Um, so an important result on QMA2 is that it's in uh, QMAK is that it is in fact the same thing as QMA2 for any polynomial number of proofs. So, um, so, so it really, the, the class is, uh, the difference between QMA and QMA, QMAK is just, is there one proof or are there two proofs uh, used, used to prove, prove the, um, the, the, the language? Um, so QMA2 is, um, boy, uh, like, um, yeah, so what, what is known about QMA2? It um, was introduced, uh, well, well, one idea is that, that it uh, should um, give some idea of the power of unentanglement, how much how much knowledge do you get, extra knowledge do you get if you know if you know there is no entanglement at a certain point in a state? Um, but in terms of complexity theory, not too much is known about the relationship with of QMA two and its its neighboring uh, neighboring classes. In particular, it's known to contain QMA, uh, and it's known to be contained in next. But no uh, no uh, tighter containments are are known. Um, further, thanks to the QMA k equals QMA two proof, it's known that um, the QMA2 can be, um, you, you can assume that you have exponentially, exponentially good completeness and soundness. And um, there are complete problems known for QMA2, but, um, but they are le perhaps less natural than, than the complete problems known for, for example, QMA. Uh, the known complete problem for QMA2, uh, the closest to the, the local Hamiltonian problem for QMA, is, is the separable sparse Hamiltonian problem. It's asking that when you're given a Hamiltonian that's represented as a, as a, as a sparse matrix, um, is there a separable um, state with low energy or not? Uh, however, the sort of the more, more similar to the local Hamiltonian problem, the separable local Hamiltonian problem, given a local Hamiltonian, is there a, is there a separable state with low energy? That uh, problem is in fact in QMA, uh, not in QMA2. So, so that it gives a, it gives a, it, it, asks, it sort of begs the question: Is, is this separable, separable sparse um, Hamiltonian problem really the, the generalization of of um, of uh, the local Hamiltonian to QMA two? And if not, is there a problem that um, 
that naturally gives naturally gives both um, complete problems for QMA and QMA two with some variation of the of the parameters involved. Um, so that's that's what I'm going to be talking about today. It's, it's a problem that uh, that comes from from quantum graphs and um, as uh, as as we we know the, the graphs are are a very liquid a very uh, very good source of um, of comp problems in complexity theory and uh, one um, one thing you can do is you can give a graph as the problem instance and ask what are some properties that this graph has for example um, uh, very important for this this work is the clique problem um, given our graph. Um, it does there exist a, a subset of vertices that where all the vertices are connected to each other. Um, closely related is the independent set problem, um, which is uh, sort of the, the converse that given a, um, given, a, given a graph, is there a set of vertices where none of them are connected to each other? And also closely related is, is coloring, where uh, the goal is to partition uh, the graph in a certain, into a certain number of independent sets. Um, so for a given clique size, um, asking is there a clique of this size is in P because you can just cycle through the vertices of the graph. Um, but given both the, um, the, the graph and the, the wanted clique size as input to the problem, that does become MP-complete. And that's a, um, a famous early uh, MP-complete problem that, that, uh, that was known. Um, and in this work, we look at a different way of constructing graphs. And it comes from. Uh, from channels. Um, so classically, a channel is just a, um, a probabilistic uh, map that to each um, point of an input set uh, associates a probability, probability distribution over the output set. Um, and uh, um, a graph that can be constructed from this is the confusability graph, which, is, uh, which just says that if two inputs uh, are, are possible to be confused by the graph, they sh uh, by the by the channel, they should be connected by uh, by an edge in the graph, and so so for example, this given some some channel where these arrows point to the the, the different the different outputs that, uh, that you can get, you can construct the corresponding confusability graph. For example, the fact that both x one and x two map to y one means that x one and x two should be connected by an edge in the confusability graph. Um, and um, and a uh, fundamental theorem on the confusability graphs uh, due to Shannon is that the zero error capacity of the channel, how much information can you send um, through through this channel without without uh, any probability of error, um, is the size of the largest independent set of the corresponding confusability graph. So there's a connection between like communication with classical channels and the corresponding um, the corresponding confusability graphs, and we can use this idea to, to say, to, to construct, um, to talk about rather graph parameters uh, for, uh, for channels and use this to, to come up with uh, complexity theoretic problems. Um, so that's the question we're, we're, interesting, uh, we're interested in is um, given, given some channel, can we, can we talk about the, um, the complexity of computing the graph parameters of the corresponding um, Corresponding confusability graph. So classically, in the deterministic case, um, this is the same thing as the the collision problem for functions. Given a uh, deterministic function, is there um, are there a pair of inputs that give the same output? Um, and it's known that the the this, this collision problem, which is also which is equivalently phrased as the two -clique, two clique problem for the for the deterministic functions, is an NP complete problem. And it can be seen as a uh, as a graph problem on a graph on a on a succinctly presented uh, graph. Um, similarly, you can sort of um, come up with a probabilistic version of this that becomes MA complete. Um, here, it's uh, you, we have a, we give a no, we use a notion of uh, of confusability that's um, that has a little bit of a of, of a robustness parameter alpha. That, that says that um, the the two inputs should be connected if there's a probability of if the probability of confusion is above a certain threshold, and with this notion of of uh, connectivity, um, this uh, this problem also becomes MA complete. Um, 
if the if we're quantifying over classical probabilistic channels. Um, now, to to get a quantum version of this problem, um, the 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 first thing to do is uh, ask how should these graph properties uh, of classical channels be turned into graph properties of quantum channels, and this is done via via the idea of a quantum graph. So, uh, given a graph, uh, one a different way to write uh, the graph rather than a drawing is using a um, using the adjacency matrix, and equivalently, the adjacency matrix can be associated to something called an operator system, which for a classical graph is just the vector space of matrices uh, where you just fill in every place uh, in the adjacency matrix that has a one or is on the diagonal with an arbitrary complex number. Uh, so formally, an operator system is just a vector subspace of the matrices that's closed under the, the Hermitian conjugate, and um, it contains the identity operator. Um, and the, this is the, the sort of the right object to generalize uh, to get a quantum notion of a graph, because uh, all of the classical graphs are contained as operator systems, but there's more operator systems than the ones constructed in this way, giving uh, natively uh, quantum graphs. Um, and and uh, uh, the sort of justification for why this is the right notion of a quantum graph is that the, the, uh, these confusability graph ideas um, can be directly generalized to, to a confusability graph for quantum channels. And it's just a, a span of the products of the Krauss operators um, gives you a, an operator system. And this operator system um, has connections to the, the zero error capacity of, um, of the corresponding channel. Um, as for a quantum graph, you, uh, as for a classical graph, I mean, you can look at cliques and independent sets of quantum graphs. A clique is just a subset of vectors such that the, the corresponding uh, um, ketbras of, uh, of vectors are contained in the operator system. And an independent set is, is uh, can similarly be phrased as a set of vectors where the, the corresponding ketbras are orthogonal to the operator system. Um, so, so using these, this, this idea of, a, of quantum versions of cliques and independent sets, we can um, look at how this, uh, this gives a, a quantum, uh, quantum clique problem for channels. Um, so again, we want a bit of an error robust version of, of this notion of a, of a clique. And here we look at it as, um, we look at a clique for a channel as, um, as uh, states, rho and sigma, that are orthogonal, but once you pass them through the channel, they have high overlap. Um, and the, this, this gives a promise problem, um, which, which is the, 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 the problem um, we want to consider, um, which given a, ch a channel, give a, a, say via its circuit description, uh, uh, we ask whether um, there exists um, a clique um, with a certain parameter, or um, with a completeness parameter or a no clique up to a certain soundness parameter. Um, so so the, a major result of, of our work is to show that this problem is actually uh, in QMA too, with any inver inverse polynomial completeness, completeness soundness gap. Um, and the way, the way to do this, we do this is um, making use of the, of the swap test. Um, so the, the, uh, the proof, uh, the, the QMA2 proof is just the tensor product of the, of the two states that, are, that form the clique. Um, the, and the way, the way the, this proof is verified is that the, for, is, uh, one of two things is done uh, by the verifier. Uh, the verifier does the swap test on, on the two input states to check that they're orthogonal with a certain probability. And, with, and the rest of the time, the verifier acts with the channel on both of these states and does again the swap test to check that they are that they have high overlap. Um, so, so QMA two is potentially a very large class, and it's n not really that interesting to show that a problem is simply contained in QMA two. The um, the the main result of the work is uh, that we show that this problem is hard uh, for QMA two, uh, as well as being as well as being contained. So it's QMA two complete. Um, the idea is um, that we we will Make use of um, make use of the structure of um, of cliques for partial trace channels, 
And essentially, this, this will allow us to guarantee um, separability of the, of the states in the clique. Um, and then uh, also use um, cliques of, of uh, entanglement breaking channels in order to, to guarantee some, um, some properties of the, of the QMA2 verification circuit. So an entanglement breaking channel is just a measurement uh, followed by state preparation. And, and the way um, the, the, um, the, the hardness proof for this, this problem works is that um, a QMA2 proof, which is, we can just be seen as the tensor product of, um, of two states, is encoded as a two clique as uh, just you take this tensor product and you tensor on another uh, qubit, um, which could be zero or one, in order to guarantee orthogonality of the, of the two states in the clique. Um, and as I mentioned, um, the, the, channel, the channel used to, the channel constructed uh, to, show, to show hardness, it makes use of a partial trace first to enforce the separability of the, um, the, the, um, the, the, the states in the clique, and also um, an entanglement breaking channel to, to verify that the, the, the states actually both give, um, um, give proofs that, that accept with high probability um, finally, this um, a restricted version of this problem can be used to, uh, to also give a, a QMA complete problem. Um, and the way the, way, uh, the problem is restricted is, um, is, is, is just to, to uh, consider only entanglement breaking channels. And it's just a, ver a, a very uh, large subset of these entanglement breaking channels as the class of channels to quantify over. And the subset is just those that forget one of the qubits in order to, to avoid having to check orthogonality, which would require, uh, which would require a swap test. Um, and it, and it um, uses two, two important results. One is uh, from the work of Beggy and Shore um, on a related problem, on a, on a related complexity problem to this, uh, to this quantum clique problem. Um, and there they show that given a local Hamiltonian, there is a, an entanglement breaking channel Who's uh, where these maximal overlaps um, scale with the where, or scale inversely with the ground energy, and there's um, and then that gives you that that entanglement breaking channels are in fact hard for a QMA. On the other hand, there's a there's a theorem of, of Brandau that gives a class of um, QMA problems where that are actually sorry QMA two problems that are actually in QMA, and then these are the QMA two problems where the verifier can make a Bell measurement, that is measure locally on the uh, on the two uh, factors of the proof, and then um, and then do classical post processing on the on the measurement results to decide whether or not to accept. Uh, and and it turns out that doing the swap test on the output of an entanglement breaking channel is actually a Bell measurement, and thus the um, uh, verifying this this QMA two proof uh, for the for the clique um, for the clique problem is actually something that can be done in QMA. Um, in conclusion, this uh, the the quantum clique problem for um, for uh, for for uh, quantum channels it gives by by changing the set of of channels over which uh, over which uh, the problem is quantified, it gives uh, a variety uh, gives complete problem for a variety of uh, of interesting uh, proof classes. Uh, I think there's a lot of there's quite a few open uh, questions available uh, for study in this in this direction. First is something I didn't mention earlier, um, but I did mention that there's the, the, there could be a, there's, there's a, this idea of independent set, and there's an equivalent problem for independent sets. And what what uh, we know is that um, for for the, the 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 problems corresponding to NP, MA, and QMA, the the same hardness results hold. And we know that the quantum independent set problem is contained in QMA two, but uh, the proof techniques we used for the the QMA two hardness actually uh, break down in the independent set case. So it, it, uh, so it's, uh, it remains to be, to be shown whether the, uh, the quantum independent set problem is QMA too hard or not. Um, the other, other graph problems could be adapted in this way to give perhaps interesting uh, complexity theoretic problems uh, for quantum channels. Um, and um, another class that I mentioned that uh, um, that could be of interest is QCMA with, with classical proofs, and there might be some there might be some construction um, 
of, of a problem from this class that gives a complete problem for QCMA. Um, finally, um, there are, other than these classical graph parameters for quantum graphs, there's also quantum graph parameters for quantum graphs related to, uh, related more closely to non-local games. Um, and there could be, there could be a way to, to talk about, um, to talk about these, these parameters for quantum channels and get interesting complexity problems from uh, those. Uh, thanks for listening and uh, I'll open up for, for questions. Okay, thank you for your interesting talk. Uh, any questions, please? Uh, mm -hmm. Were there no known QMA two complete questions before? Uh, there, there were known known uh, problems. Uh, the one I mentioned is this this uh, this sparse separable local sparse separable Hamiltonian problem. But the way that, uh, as far as, as to the best of my knowledge, the way the known uh, QMA2 complete problems relate to QMA complete problems was sort of unclear. And uh, I, I think this, this, this problem is sort of a natural problem that, uh, that you can sort of interpolate between QMA and QMA2. Thanks for the nice talk. Uh, do we know anything if the channel has, say, a succinct description, then does this problem remain hard or? Uh, sorry? Say the channel has a succinct description, maybe the cross rank is small mm. or the cross operators are maybe classically describable. Does this problem remain hard in QMA? Uh, QMA yeah, I mean, the, 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 the thing that makes this, this channel, uh, this channel, this problem, um, problem uh, hard, or in fact, the, the, that makes the problem quantum is that the channels have to be succinctly described. Um, we were using the, 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 the like circuit description, but I think you can you can get away with using like a succinct graph description and, and get a similar a problem with a very similar flavor. Um, if if you restrict to looking at like full graph descriptions of channels, all of these problems end up in NP. Um, I don't know if they're NP NP hard or not, but they 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 um, because because you don't have quantum systems of ex of exponential dimension, um, you just have exp quantum systems of polynomial dimension, which you can do classical things with. Thanks. Uh, thank you for your last talk. I wonder Thanks. in this quantum two click problem, is this quantum channel given as a black box oracle, black box oracle or you need to? It's, um, I mean, you could give it as a black box. We were considering giving it as a, as a circuit. But in the actual proof, it's it's used. The circuit is just used as a black box. We don't look inside the circuit and see what happens. Okay. So, so this hard list from uh, is is come from the this uh you know hard random oracle or some kind of circuit is also also okay. Uh, I I believe so. But we can talk after if you like. Okay. okay. If you give it as a black box, do you think it's useful for maybe oracle separations, like quantum oracle separations, QMA to QMA? Hmm. Maybe, yeah, I hadn't thought about that, but uh, but yeah, maybe there's a there's a way to, to to sort of spin this as a as an attempt to do an oracle separation. Thanks. So, any more questions? Okay, so last, last, last. Okay, so uh, it's one of my questions. So let's sign the speaker again and go today.